Yo, what's cracking, peeps? Happy Thursday. T-Money up in the heezy. Here to bring you another entry in my collection overview series. Uh, tonight, I've gathered all of my Twilight Time films to show you, all my Twilight Time Blu-rays. And I have around 40 or so, so um, we'll get right in this. Just wanted to clearly um, introduce my Blood Red Corn Snake to y'all. Uh, Lou, a.k.a. Lucifer, is up in the heezy with me here to do this review. So he was itching to get out of his cage, so I figured let him... Uh, this would be a good time to let him out while I do this. So there's my cat in the window. Hi, Peepsina. Hi, baby girl. So anyways, guys, without further ado, let's get in this update. Uh, first up, we have an Italian film from 1969. Uh, La Bombola di Santana. And basically what we have here is a gothic horror mystery film set in a castle. Uh, very moody, very atmospheric, and um, I like it. It's very horrific. If you like your foreign horror flicks, I highly recommend you check it out. For time's sake, I'm going to move kind of fast. Uh, next up, we have a film from 1973 starring Chucky Charles Bronson. Uh, basically, he plays a cop. Tough cop versus the mob type flick. So if you're into these things, it's violent and it takes place in a big city. I enjoy it. I recommend it. Next up, we have an amazing... Um, Based on a true story, 10 Rollington Place, uh, amazing performance by John Hurt. He plays um, uh, Richard Attenborough, who is a serial, serial killer. Um, and it's basically a um, story of a serial killer placed uh, from 1971. Uh, it's a true life crime drama, but it's really good. I highly recommend it. Next up, we have Rollerball from 1975. Starring James Caan. It says sensational futuristic drama. Uh, which it is. And yeah, it's okay. It's kind of weird, the whole idea of the rollerball game. It's okay. It's kind of like, um, what do you call it? Not Turkey Shoot. Um, another, that other movie where there's a game. I'm, I always draw a blank on it. Um, very similar though to that. Of course, it doesn't really give you much if I can't tell you what it is. But... Um, <clears throat> From 1970, we have Scream and Scream Again. This is starring uh, Vincent Price. Can't go wrong with this one. It says, achieves a uniquely nightmarish quality, holds your attention because of its barmy plotting, unexpected twists, and deep suspicion of the authorities, which feeds the general air of Paranora, a true original. Uh, with its ambitious structure, intriguing premise, and prevailing sense of paranoia, Scream and Scream Again is a fascinating film. It says, kind of a horror movie, kind of an espionage film, and in some sense, a piece of science fiction. Scream and Scream Again features turns by three icons of the horror genre. Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, and Vincent Price. All are involved in a wild plot connecting Great Britain to some unnamed totalitarian state where torture, murder, and out-of-control experiments are the order of the day. So, excellent. You can't go wrong with a cast like that, can you? Next up, one of my favorite... Vincent Price Films, also released by Arrow Video. We have, and I really dig this artwork here too, Theater of Blood. Uh, basically, um, um, Vincent Price mimics Shakespeare. And uh, it reminds me a lot of the Tales from the Crypt episode that deals with um, uh, Top Billing, I believe it's called. But I'll read you the synopsis here. It says, directed by uh, Douglas Hickox. Offers the one and only Vincent Price in a role both madcap and touching. He plays a Shakespearean actor determined to wreak vengeance on the critics who fail to appreciate his genius, killing them in a series of set-piece murders based on the scenes from Shakespeare plays. Amazing. Highly recommend it. Uh, this next one I've actually never seen before. It's called Edge of Sanity. My apologies for my squirrely snake who's in my pocket. Uh -huh. oh, I grabbed Theater of Blood again. You're going to fuck me right up, aren't you, Lou? Um, this one is from 19, 7, 1959. Not only a neat little crime thriller, but one of the better outdoor adventure movies of its era, availing itself on the landscape, attending the Grand Canyon and its surrounding area, as only a color film and cinema, cinema scope could, filled with visually and striking images juxtaposed around the mystery, a fine mystery story. Uh, next up, we have an amazing... Uh, film noirish horror film *Kiss of Death* from 1947 tells the tale of a petty, petty cook turned stool pigeon, who, in his attempt to go straight, finds himself stalked by a psycho killer. Uh, 1947 stars Victor Mature, Brian 
Don Valley, Colleen Gray, a bunch of actors and actresses. Fantastic actors and actresses. Another one starring Vincent Price. Excellent film from 1954, black and white. The Mad Magician in 3D. A shocker thriller with Vincent Price in one of his signature psychotic roles. Cheesy fun with a delightfully villainous Vincent Price. Can't go wrong with that one. Next up we have the classic epic adventure Moby Dick from 1956, the original. Um, and yeah, you guys all know the story of Moby Dick, I would assume, so don't need to go there. This next one is really fun. Sci-fi horror, Mysterious Island, excellent um, special effects, stop motion animation, just a really fun fa fantasy adventure film. I believe Ray Harryhausen did the stop motion animation in that film. Uh, don't quote me on that. One of my favorite Charles Bronson flicks, 10 to Midnight, more of a slasher film. Highly recommend you guys check this movie out. 10 to Midnight, directed by veteran J. Lee Thompson, stars the yes, yes, as a steely cop. Charles Bronson plays a steely cop facing off against a wily serial killer. A lot of fun. Very good film. And we have the classic 1984. I believe this is based off of a novel um, from the year 1984, adapted from George Orwell's classic. Yep. Uh, stars John Hurt and Winston Smith, a drone in a totalitarian state dominated by the supreme figurehead Big Brother. Attempting to break out, he has an affair with Julia, a rebellious and sensualist, but then has to deal with O'Brien, a powerful tool of the state, featuring cinematography by the great Roger Deakins. This one was from 1984, I already said that twice. Um, this next film, Romeo is Bleeding, great film from 1993. Uh, it's directed by Peter Medak, and it is about a rough-and-tumble neo-noir. Well, it is a rough-and-tumble neo-noir starring Gary Oldman as a ruthless, ambitious hood who gets in over his head when he fails, when he falls for the ultimate femme fatale. Any film starring uh, Gary Oldman is good, in my opinion. Uh, Reno Williams, The Adventure Begins, an above-average thriller offering a fresh hero-based on the Destroyer series of novels. Uh, Fred Ward stars in Remo Williams from 1985 as the titular hero, titular hero, New York City cop, shanghai by a given new face and identity as an international secret agent. Trained by a meticulous martial arts expert, <clears throat> Uh, played by a nearly unrecognizable, amusing Joel Gray. He's sent to battle an evil arms manufacturer. A kind of down-market spoof of James Bond films. It's directed by Bond veteran Guy Hamilton and features a score by Craig Safan. Pretty fun action flick. Uh, next up we have The Train. I highly recommend this one. Black and white film starring Burt Lancaster from 1964. Uh, it's directed by John Frankenheimer... And it is a cracking adventure thriller. Um, uh, Burt La Lancaster stars as a workday World War II era French trainman charged with ensure ensuring that a cargo of irreplaceable French art, the pride and heritage of his nation, is not allowed to leave France. D despite the mechanicians of a Nazi officer determined to steal these great works for Germany. Also starring Jean Moreau and Michael Simone and featuring compelling black and white cinematography by Jean Tour. Next up, we have another really fun one from 1983, Strange Invaders. I love, um, what's his name in this? Is it not Paul Max? Oh, I always forget the guy's name. But it's a film by Michael Laughlin and... Um, Basically a sci-fi homage to science fiction alien takeover films of the 1950s. Highly recommend it. Next up we have Count Yorga Vampire. I love this film. I think it's a lot of fun. Also released by Arrow Video. My apologies if I'm a little bit far away, guys. But I have to kind of stand here because there's a table in front of me. But um, yeah, I just really like this film. I love the atmosphere in it. Good vampire flick. And then we have the amazing Runaway Train. Love this movie. Uh, it's from 1985. Just a fun little action thriller, uh, foreign action flick. Uh, let's see. It's based on a story by legendary Akira Kurosawa and a terrifying thrill ride about a pair of convicts who, after a brutal prison break, make their escape on a train. 
kind of familiar to um, a more recently released The Incident, which I do have. Uh, I probably should have put this next to 10 Rollington Place, The Boston Strangler. Another film kind of based on the Boston Strangler serial killer. So pretty good. Not bad. Actually, it's I like um, 10 Rollington Place a bit better, but it's still good. The classic Clint Eastwood, Thunderbolt and Lightfoot starring Jeff Bridges, George Kennedy. Amazing cast. Pretty great film from 1974. Funny crime comedy. Action flick. Good stuff. I really enjoy this film, The Vanishing. This is the remake uh, starring Jeff Bridges, who plays a pretty weird... Uh, he plays a weirdo, but Jeff Bridges. Um, a brief role from... What's her name? Well, Kiefer Suther Sutherland's in it. Sandra Bullock. Basically, um, Sandra Bullock gets kidnapped by Jeff Bridges. And Kiefer Sutherland, who is her boyfriend or husband, uh, spends the whole time trying to find what happened to her. But it's fun. I like it a lot. The classic Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. Great uh, horror thriller from 1964. Um, starring the amazing Betty Davis. Uh, it's... Oh, I didn't know. Whatever happened to Baby Jane. So this is the following up on that. Davis plays a mad, if wealthy, old bat who, rumor has it, brutally murdered her married lover some decades earlier. When her decaying plantation house is threatened with demolition, she calls on a poor cousin for help. A decision she soon begins to regret. Excellent film. Next up we have perhaps one of my favorite remakes of all time. However, I don't unfortunately recommend this release. It has a really weird blue tint to it. Um, I would definitely go with the Umbrella release in this case. Twilight Time is generally a pretty solid company in terms of their transfers and just their work in general. But I love this movie. Don't really have to say much about it. Tony Todd. Amazing performance by Tony Todd. Probably my favorite horror remake of all time. It's definitely not the best. I just There's something about that movie that I love. I actually really love the fact that it's a scene for scene. Basically a scene for scene. Uh, remake of the original and it's in color so it's kind of like a updated version um i hope my snake doesn't poop on peer poop or pee on me but that's his position that that he goes when he goes to the bathroom i think he just did didn't he guys we're gonna have to pause this my apologies sorry about that dudes i'm back um, I don't know what just happened. I thought he, like, pissed on me, but there was nothing there. So, um, but if you look at the footage, there was a white chunk there, and then it disappeared. It might have just been the collar of my shirt. I don't know. Anyways, I'm back. My apologies for the brief intermission. Uh, but next up, we have a awesome film starring the great Frank Sinatra, the detective. Uh, it's from 1968, and it's basically a another adult um, detective thriller. Good film. And next up we have The Black Widow, um, 1987. It's an alluring tale of a seductress who marries and murders a series of wealthy men. Getting away with her crimes until an unequally, until an equally clever female adversary, a Justice Department drone, picks up the Black Widow scent. Another pretty awesome Charles Bronson film, uh, Chateau's Land. It's really good. Basically just like an epic adventure flick. An effective and frequently disturbing piece of filmmaking. A tough, cynical western with well-paced direction and a fine performance from Charles Bronson. And the cast of Vagabonds out to get him. 1972. Produced and directed by Michael Werner. It's a fun film, for sure. And we have the double feature of Jackie Chan, Snake in the Eagle's Claw, and Drunken Master. Two amazing films. Martial arts, uh, Jackie Chan, martial art work, or martial, martial arts at its finest. <laughs> uh, we have 1978. I guess they were both from 78. Not sure. But, yeah, I like, uh, they're both great films. I, I don't know. They're both good. This one's really awesome. The other, another horror film, supernatural horror flick. Uh, let's see. It is a psychological horror film set in the Depression-era New England about a pair of young twins 
who find themselves at the center of a series of ghastly accidents that may not be so accidental. Really good stuff. And I've never seen this one, Beneath the 12 Mile Reef. Uh, it says, one of the earliest cinemascope pictures, Beneath the 12 Mile Reef from 1953, takes us deep into the crystal clear perilous waters off the Florida coast where two rival SpongeBob diving families produce a boy and a girl who of course fall for each other. Stunning widescreen underwater cinematography and a staggeringly atmospheric score from one the only one and only Bernard Herrmann. And, um, so yeah, awesome. And we have the classic Mind Warp. Seems like they were trying to get rid of this movie forever. I got this really cheap. It's a fun movie. Uh, it's like a horror adventure flick. Uh, let's see. Starring Bruce Campbell and Angus Scrim. Can't go wrong with that. Wow, it's produced by Fangoria Films. I didn't know that. Uh, the film tells a grisly tale of a post-apocalyptic society in which the privileged exist only as dreamers, eternally plugged into a virtual reality fantasy land, in-world, while in the, in the ravaged outworld, humans have mutated into savage flesh eaters, led by a mysterious charismatic Despo, inter interested only in survival. Depot, is it? Despot. Despo. Interested only in survival, directed by Steve Barrett, Hollywood Boulevard. But it's fun. Good special effects in this film. Kind of a mind, kind of a mind fuck mind warp is. Another awesome film, The Believers. A lot of fun. Horror. Supernatural. Supernatural horror. Recently widowed police psychologist forced to deal with a series of ritualistic child murders apparently perpetrated by a malevolent rogue branch off of a Caribbean cult re religion. As the cult's connections to corporate oligarchs begin to emerge, the lives of Cal and those around him, particularly his vulnerable young son, are put at terrible risk. It's a good film. The Believers. Supernatural horror. And we have the classic Audrey Rose. Need I say anything about this film? An amazing film from 1977. Hang on a second, please. Next up, we have The St. Valentine's Day Massacre. I don't really know much about this film, 1967. A study of the events and striking personalities of The St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Uh, but it's basically about, I think, like, uh, mobsters and the incident. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It says, excoriated in its day for its unvarnished violence, it has emerged in recent years as a respected cult favorite. I gotta check that one out. I don't really know much about it, clearly. Then we have the classic Ombre, classic Western film from 1967. Yeah, it's just a epic adventure Western. Really good stuff. And it does star Paul Newman, Frederick March, Richard Boone. Amazing cast. It's been a while. Cameron Mitchell's in this. That's right. Yeah, uh, it's been a while, but I gotta check it out. And then we have Mississippi Burning, starring a unique role from um, Brad Dourif, I think is in this, right? Gene Hackman, William Defoe, Willem Defoe. Um, I can't remember. I think he is in this, but it doesn't even say in the back. Francis McDormand. Oh yeah, Brad Dourif, yep. Uh, let's see. It tells the real life tale of three young civil rights workers murdered in the deep South Mississippi, fo focusing on the FBI agents who arrived to investigate the crime. Good movie. And another film starring the great and a young role by Vincent Price, Dragonwick. Based on Anya Seton's gothic historical bestseller, Dragonwick was the first film in the storied directorial career of Joseph, Joseph L. Mankiewicz. It tells the spooky tale of an innocent country girl, Miranda, summoned to work, summoned to work as a governess at the magnificent estate, the eponious Dragonwick. Of a distant cousin, the imperious Nicholas von Rinn, played by Vincent Price. Despite the luxury of the surroundings and the romantic attentions of Nicholas, things soon to take a more sinister turn for our heroine. Another kind of creepy role by the old Vincent, the master Vincent Price. And I've never seen this movie, but I really have to check this out. This was recommended by uh, Jeremy from 22 Shots and Moods and Horror, The Incident. Uh, supposedly an amazing film from 1967. Basically about a bunch of convicts um, 
focuses on a nightmare subway trip and a group of passengers terrorized by a pair of punks. So the victims include veterans and an array of newcomers. Sounds awesome. Um, and last but not least, the one blue case I have, because I haven't actually opened this movie, is the remake of The Blob from 1988. Great film. Don't really need to say anything about that. So guys, thanks for watching this. Um, that has been my uh, collection overview of all of my Twilight Time movies. So let me know what Twilight Time movies you like, if you have any recommendations for me of any that I should pick up. Any recommendations at all would be greatly appreciated because I'm always liking or looking to explore new Twilight Times. They're a unique company because they put out a lot more than just horror. So I'm kind of, you know, I found out the Westerns, the, whoa, buddy. A lot of the Westerns, the thrillers, the film noirs, all that good stuff. Even the Jackie Chan martial arts films, all that stuff is good. So I'm always looking to expand my horizons. So let me know if you have any recommendations. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Sorry about the um, little intermission there, but uh, have a good night and I'll catch y'all soon with another update. Peace.